Energy flow in the wild is pretty straightforward, with an organism consuming the one below it on the food chain. But how do we model this energy flow, effectively? Well, using an energy pyramid. An energy pyramid consists of four levels, each of them being labeled a trophic level. Your first level consists of your producers, who gets their energy from the sun. Then you have your primary consumers, who, which are largely herbivores that eat the producers. Then you have your secondary consumers, which are largely carnivores that consume the primary consumers. And then you have your tertiary consumers, the head honcho of the energy pyramid. They stand uncontested, but they have the least amount of energy out of the whole pyramid, which, doesn't, which can't sustain a large population. So exactly how much energy is transferred between the levels? Well, not that much. Only 10% to be exact. But where does the other 90% of the energy go? Well, it goes out into the environment as heat, and it's also used during the process of absorbing the energy by the consumer. How would you do this math exactly? Well, it's simple. Let's start off with 10,000 kilocalories, which is the unit used to measure energy. And you would simply divide it by 10, which would only give you 1,000 kilocalories. So between the producers and the primary consumer, the primary consumer is only getting 1,000 kilocalories of energy from eating the producer. This same process can be repeated for each of the levels, which is why the tertiary consumers only get not that much energy, which is why they can't support a huge population. Well, that's the basics of the energy pyramid. There are more videos out there that go into more into, that go into deeper detail, but I was only here to give you the basic understanding of the energy pyramid. I hope this video inspired you to go out and do more research on this and find out much deeper information about this very interesting topic.